Hello everybody, this is Rockhound777 and I'm going to be doing a tutorial today on a mob farm system that I'm currently working on in my new Let's Play series. So, first things first, we've got to create a new world. Um, system while I was typing mob farm tutorial this is for minecraft 1.3.2 let's see what we get and starting in a jungle again it seems like I'm always starting in a jungle so I'm going to give it a second here to spawn some of the surrounding land. It does seem like it's taking a while, but it looks like there's a swamp that way, jungle this way. Okay, so there's a couple things that uh, that differentiate this this mob farm from a lot of the a lot of the other ones you see. And the first one is it does not require any kind of preliminary work on your part in the world to uh, to get the most uh, efficiency out of the mob farm and by that I mean you don't have to do any kind of of lighting up of any of the caves underground in order to get this to work it'll work uh, as soon as you build it you do have to what you do have to do is is gather up all of the resources required to to build it and since we're using we're going to be using dispensers it gets a little tricky at the very beginning to to get all of the string you need to make those dispensers but doing a little bit of mining and kill a couple spiders you can get it get it at least partially functional and then able to gather up uh, the rest of the stuff that you need. Okay, so this actually looks like a pretty good spot to, to build this on. The, the first thing you need to do is find a nice flat place to build this. Something without a lot of, of hills and uh, swamps work out really well for this because they're, they're right, at, uh, right at sea level and you usually have a pretty good area where there's not uh, not any hills around okay so we're gonna call this we're gonna I think go with this area right here right here looks good and the first thing I'm gonna do just to show you just to prove that I have not done any kind of, of prep work I'm going to make a little TNT extra machine. All right. Let's see what's underneath this here. Okay, there are a lot of caves. You can see that the only light lighting down there is whatever was provided by by the lava you can actually see some there's an enderman there's some creepers okay there we go so we're gonna build it right here the first thing you have to the first thing that you have to realize is that with the the way mobs spawn in in minecraft now uh, let's pick something interesting to to build this out of um, I'll just go with the sandstone for the base. Um, the way mobs spawn and despawn in Minecraft, they uh, is what is actually the key to this. And mobs spawn in a uh, in a radius around you of 24 blocks away, 24 meters, and that means you have to be outside of 24 range for them to spawn, but 
outside of a 128 radius, they all the hostile mobs automatically despawn. So that's that's the trick. So underneath here, up to 120 blocks away, it goes all the way down to down to bedrock in 128 in every direction is all spawning locations for for mobs and it goes in a circle and what you can do is build straight up into the sky so if you look at your your debug screen you see we're at 63 here and 63 64 is usually where we start from it will build up if we build up 128 blocks from here then you're going to be outside of the range of every available spawning space underground so basically you just have the uh, the spawning space on the ground there so we're gonna build up to if we go from one from 63 we're gonna go ahead and go up to uh, let's see 192 I think should be uh, should be 120 nine blocks away so you can do this a couple different ways you can build uh, any kind of tower you want just for for to just to make it easy we're going to build a single tower here up up to 192 and we're obviously on creative so I can just fly up but in my Let's Play series, I built a nice, a nice tower up, which I am gonna go back in later and put in a uh, some kind of elevator system in, like a uh, like a minecart elevator, something like that. So, whatever you want to do to make it uh, visually appealing, it doesn't matter, just as long as you get to the correct height. Okay, we're at 192. You can see that is pretty high up there. And let's go back down to the bottom. And you can watch the third line down in the debug screen, the the E. That stands for, for entities and and that is all the passive and aggressive uh, spawned creatures in the game, as well as any kind of items on the ground. Like if we if we were to throw this out, you'd see it goes up to 53, pick it up, 52. So now, if we go up to the top of this tower, you can see about halfway up we'll start getting out of range of, of some of the stuff that's spawned below ground. And it'll start going down. There, it's starting to drop. And we'll go higher, a little higher, it keeps dropping. And by the time we get up to the top, it is now sitting at almost nothing and there might be a couple little things in range if there's a hill here that has some kind of spawning spot inside of it it'll it'll actually have have room to spawn something but mostly it does what it's doing now which jumps up and down up and down which i think is the game actually trying to spawn things that are immediately despawned so so what we want to do is go ahead and build out from here a nice platform. This is going to be the base where we build everything else that we build everything else off of. So I'm going to build a, uh, a quick platform here. This is going to be our base that everything else works up from. So this is going to be a a fall type mob grinder. So they're going to fall. That'll allow us to do a couple things. It will give us um, an easy way to to kill the mobs, and it'll also also let us easily make it into a uh, a system where you can change between whether you get uh, just the drops from the creatures or whether you get uh, you can use it as an experience grinder as well 
So the first thing we want to do is build a tower up. And the way this is, this is going to be a little bit different than a lot of them you see. So this is what we want. We want a a 4x4 four four, uh, square in the middle. And what, why I do it with a 4x4 four four square instead of something smaller is that this actually will work with with um, spiders as well as zombies, skeletons, and creepers. And that's that's one of the other ways that this, this is a little bit different than other ones. A lot of them, you see people putting down uh, putting down slabs and, and doing other things to prevent spiders from spawning. But we're going to go ahead and we, we, we want them to spawn because uh, with a lot of things now, with uh, with the trip wires and other stuff that you that you want to do with redstone, string comes in really handy, and this works just fine with uh, with spiders. So we're going to go from here. Give me uh, I'm gonna, I'm extending this platform a little bit to give us some room to work around it here. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and build up from here. And I will be back in just a minute. Let me see. That's something else to uh, to note while you're building this. Make sure you light everything up really well because we're up here so high up. And obviously it doesn't matter that much on creative, but if you're on survival, since there are no places available for mo other mobs to spawn this high, if you don't light it up while you're building it, you will just be overrun with, uh, with mobs. So I'm building this up 23 high off of the base. And that's uh, that's where we'll work for from. Now. So I'm gonna build this. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, we are at the top of this. I'm going to pick another block just so I can differentiate the different layers of this system here. Um, what should we go with? Uh, how about this? Birchwood. Okay. So we are at, let's see, how high up? We're at 215, and as you can see, we're getting really close to the uh, to the build height limit, which is only you know 440 up from here about, and this is going to have to be a fairly space efficient mob spawning area um, above this in order for it to work, and that's this this works out really well. So let me show you what we're doing. The first thing we're doing is going to build the uh, the channel that the mobs will push me push down into, and what I've done here, put some torches up here. Is the the walls will be like so, and the water will flow here, and we'll drop them down. Drop mobs down in here. And this overhang is what makes it uh, work with spiders. So they'll drop down here and instead uh, spiders take up a 4x4 block about. I think that's right. Um, anyway, they'll drop down here and this lip around will let them fall straight down and the majority of the time, about 90% of the time, they, they will fall all the way down 
hit the bottom and they'll die without ever grabbing hold of the edge. Sometimes a sometimes a mob will will I think hit it in in the air and push it off to the side and make it be able to catch. So you do have to do a little bit of uh, clean up down there sometimes with a sword, kill kill uh, an occasional spider, but it's not too bad. So let's double check, make sure I've got the heights the height right. Uh, let's see. There's a zombie. This should kill him. Yes. And what we will do um, in a little bit is make an alternative system where that will raise with pistons. And now it should be the right height so that if something falls, the bottom falls off. Ah, see, you got put on the if they walk off on their own, they usually fall straight down. Like so. And then he does a one-hit kill, or with the zombies, actually two-hit, because they always have a little bit of armor left. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and get working on the, the rest of this system up here. Now this is going to be... We don't have a whole lot of height to work with, but what... I like to do is go ahead and make this three tall for the channel. And that seems like a waste of height space, but doing it this way will actually save height in any of the additional layers that we build. So this this will work. I'll go ahead and finish this. It's going to be um, uh, from the center, from the the center here. It's basically going to be 20 long all the way across. So if you count one here, two, three, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So that's essentially nine from this edge, which makes it halfway to ten. Okay, let's test this first row here, make sure that we've got uh, our measurements correct. And this water should flow right to the edge and not, uh, not push anything in. That's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and finish the other side. Be back in one second. this side too. I like to test things just to make sure because if you get it wrong it's really hard to go back after you continue on farther and get it right. That look fine. Okay, now for this if you've built any kind of mob spawners the, the standard is uh, 20 by 20 square essentially which is what we're going to start out with. So just like we went uh, 9 that way we're going to go ahead and go 9 both the other directions as well and we'll end up with a 20 by 20 square. So I'll go ahead and do that. Essentially 10 from the center point, including that. this here too. Make sure I've got it all right. Do, do, do. Right to the edge. Yes, that is correct. All right, the basic platform is done. Nice 
still see in a lot of uh, Let's Players or other videos on YouTube people doing uh, multi-layer mob farms where you've got a spawning platform and then a, a series of channels or something below them where the mobs walk off and drop down and then get pushed this way and there are a couple different options that you can do now and what I like to do um, is with this version of of Minecraft you can use dispensers let me show you really quick just what I'm talking about so you've got a you can place dispensers down in there and if you put a water bucket in the dispenser and we did do a 20 by 20 square but this is going to require an extra double row of, of blocks out past those I just did 20 by 20 to show how the, the water flows but if you power a dispenser that has a full water bucket in it it places the water out in front of it and it leaves the empty bucket inside there. You can take the power away, it doesn't change, but if you power it again, it picks the water source in front of it back up and puts it in the bucket. So, you can cycle it on and off a, a water flow that that pushes stuff right off to the edge. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a three high chamber, or a two high chamber, the, the roof will be the, the third block up there so we don't spawn endermen because they don't work with uh, anything with water. You have to go to the edge to make an efficient enderman farm. Anyway, um, we want to have uh, a full row of dispensers on each side of this to create a uh, toggleable water flow to push mobs off. And then we're going to put it on a clock, spawn mobs in here, and then push them off into this channel, which we'll have always have flowing water in it down into the into the drop thing there. Um, I've tried a couple different systems. Um, at first I was hoping I could get away with uh, with doing an every other every other uh, block dispenser to, to save on resources but what happens is, and if you've been playing a while, you know you can create a an infinite water source block by putting um, one infinite one source block here, one source block here, it will make another one right in the middle. And that's exactly what it does. It makes a, a source block here and that uh, that basically kills the system because then you always have water covering everything. What you can do is put some kind of block here and here if you want to. Uh, it's easier just to do all it's easier just to do all dispensers because if you do this, let me show you. You can power this one, and that works kind of, but it leaves this little spot right here. And if you're really hard up for resources, you can do that, and it's pretty efficient, but. There are things that are pushed right here and they'll stand there and then when it shuts off they'll wander around and then they may get pushed off again the next time it cycles. But really the best way to do it is just a whole row of dispensers. And in, in my Let's Play I ran into the trouble of collecting initially the string needed to create because that's uh, 18 dispensers on each side. So I ran out of I ran out of string to make all the dispensers I needed for the first layer. So I've made about probably about this many. And then I went ahead and just closed this off all the way to here. Closed this all off. I think I went all the way to here. And had that many going. So it was basically a smaller version of this. And it didn't work nearly as well as a, the completed thing, but I was fairly quickly able to gather enough string to to make the rest of them that the rest of the dispensers that I needed. So I will go ahead and finish getting this set up and I will be back in just a minute.
like I said before, a, uh, a two width uh, two width platform behind each of those spencers is necessary for the for the redstone. And I would recommend against where did I put those water buckets? I'd recommend against putting any kind of uh, of the bucket systems in here until you get it completely wired up because if you accidentally start triggering stuff some of them will go off, some of them won't it, it can be a big mess and you want to have torches in here until you're done just to prevent any kind of any, anything from spawning and, and ruining your day so the rest of the chamber looks just like you'd expect a uh, save yourself a couple blocks by cutting off the corners there like that. Like this, I mean. Okay. See, you'll save the, basically the entire perimeter of the of the spawner. One of the things I'm going to do here while we still are open to the air is, is get this channel set up. And for this you'll need buttons, and you'll need vines. And the buttons go at the second level all the way across up to the hole. prevent the vines from growing down and, and clogging the system up. The vines prevent mobs falling from any of the higher up uh, levels because we can we can do this up to oh, what was it four or five high quite a bit quite a few layers to get full efficiency um, and they're set up exactly the same, but any mob falling from, from up here will see if I can aim it correctly. They will hit that and it will prevent them from taking any kind of fall damage that will stop the uh, EXP farmer from working. And, and down here, I like to grab some signs and put uh, put uh, signs on each side of this hole. And I think mobs still see signs as solid blocks. Darn it. Okay. And that uh, that makes them less reluctant to go off the edge. It also uh, will prevent the vines that are here from growing in any longer down into the uh, into that fall chamber. Just like that. And you grab some some water one in each of the uh, back corners. There we go. That part is all set. I will go ahead and finish covering this whole thing up and I'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay, I'm just lighting up the top of this here. Make sure nothing spawns up here. This will be the, if we make any additional layers, this will be the, the floor that the mobs all spawn on. And so I don't want to do half slabs or anything unless I'm absolutely positive that I'm not going to add any more layers. Okay, this may be over, seem like overkill, but really not fun when you get up here and you you run into a creeper. I do one 
row along this side just to run redstone along. Okay. And now there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, I can run a block behind here, run run power along the top, it'll power all of those at the same time. Um, that's kind of that's kind of messy. It uses less repeaters in the way I do it, but uh, I think this is cleaner looking. So this is the this is what I do. I go through and every other dispenser I put a repeater. And then I run redstone all along the back and between them. Okay, so we've got a zombie somewhere. Let's see where he spawned. Not here. see him. That's interesting. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do this side as well. Okay, that's set. Now those are all ready to go. We're going to go ahead and what I have found is the best way to do this. Basically, if you count, obviously redstone power goes 15 blocks. You get about here, and you'll either have to figure out a way to extend it through here, loop it back, and empower the rest, or basically what I do is what I did on my let's play world and it worked out well so I'll go ahead and do it here is run a line along the bottom right about halfway throw a redstone torch on the side of that block Take this back here. Make sure you throw a repeater in there occasionally. And here's the I'll bring the power from the bottom up this side. And what I've found is let's do this. What I found is if you run it all the way to this block, even if you run it along here, and I don't know if it's technically supposed to power this, but it'll mess with it'll mess that dispenser up. So just come back about two back along the side. Run the line, run the redstone down here, and you should be fine. Okay, let's give this power and see what happens. Should power this all the way to here. That torch is inverted, it shuts this off. That looks perfect. I'll go ahead and get the other side set up. repeaters I'm using along this path may seem a little bit like overkill, but I have some really weird results um, with the... hold on a second... that's what I was doing. 
I've had some weird results with the redstone in these in these dispensers in my Let's Play world. The uh, it seemed like whenever you were getting to the end of the redstone line, you know, at the very end, it starts to, it starts getting dark and look like it's losing power. And the dispensers that were at the end of that, when it was losing power, were behaving very erratically. And I didn't think that redstone actually loses any kind of power or signal or dispensers are affected by that, but I'd have the one or two here on the ends of each of the rows um, almost uh, misfiring every every second or third time, like it wouldn't pick the water up or it, it wouldn't dispense the water when it was supposed to, so I've just been, I put in a lot of a lot of repeaters and make sure the signal is nice and strong there and, and haven't had any trouble since then, so all right, the next thing to do, everything in here looks good. The next thing to do is to go ahead and fill these up with water buckets. So I will do that really quick and I'll be back with you. Okay have those dispensers all full of, of water buckets. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we give this thing power. So that's powered now. The signal's inverted down there, so that should not do anything yet. I have a, uh, just a lighting glitch over there. Okay. Everything looks like it's working fine. You want to re make really be really careful when you're building it uh, to get this the right length, because if you get any overflow, it will knock off the vines and the buttons, and that's just a that's just a big hassle. Not to mention having to to rebuild it. Okay, let's see. Again, they should shut off. I'm not sure why that's happening, but everything seems to be working fine, and this should all be available for mobs to spawn in now. So let's go and I'll show you how I run the power up from the uh, from the base down here. And we'll do that right now. Give myself a little bit of extra room on this side. Okay, we're going to have to build a clock there. So let's go ahead and bring the power up here. So you'll go into the side of this block. Then we'll just go ahead and bring the power up in the standard way here, alternating every other block with a redstone torch on top of each. And you can hear everything up there already. Uh, I think that's going to cause an issue. Let me check. Yeah, did that wrong. Good to catch it now instead of having to troubleshoot later. This 
is simple. I'm just not doing it right. All I have to do... is bring the redstone out into a block that has a redstone torch on top. Yep. Just wasn't thinking clearly. So that's pretty simple. Same thing, just all the way up to the top. And go ahead and let's get power if that's powered. Yep, there we go. That power is brought from the base up to, to the top here. Let's go down here. We'll set up a, a quick. This will be the front of our. This will be the front of our fall chamber. So let me do that. And there's one of those guys I was talking about before. A spider that's falling down occasionally, not dying. You have to have a sword or something. Just just kill it. Not that big of a deal. All right. So what we want here is a, I'm just going to do a simple, simple redstone clock. And there are probably lots better ways to do this. I'm not a, I'm not a redstone pro or anything, but, uh, but this is easy enough to, to build and anybody can do it. Make sure you have three three redstone out. You throw down a block, throw a redstone torch on the side, and then line out a bunch of repeaters this way. I'm gonna go ahead and extend this a little bit, even even a little bit farther. And I'm not gonna do any. Uh, any math to calculate how much how much time this actually represents but you can you can figure that out if you really wanted to it's a tenth of a second for for each tick uh, default setting is one we're going to set them on four and because, like I showed before, the dispensers have to have a signal, and then if you power them off, it doesn't do anything. And if you power them again, that's when they uh, they toggle the whether the water's out or not. It essentially has to go through this clock twice before uh, for a full cycle to to either shut the dispensers on or turn the dispensers on or shut them off. So there we go. You can see you drop that redstone right into the center of that line, and it'll just circle right around. So you double that and that's the amount of spawning time that the, uh, the mobs have before they're pushed off. So here in front you'll want to go ahead and drop this down one. Okay. And now, obviously, we've got a couple problems here with uh, with collecting things. So I'm, I'll show you a couple couple things here. Um, first, obviously, if you just wanted it for drops, you can you can grab an iron door, grab a lever, and just throw a throw a door on there, or throw a lever up here, go in, collect all your stuff, go back out. There's a chance, obviously, of something falling on your head, and uh, that's not that's not the best way to automate the system. So, or, oh, I didn't need to do that. I've got a door. So what, you, what I do, throw a uh, dispenser in each corner, same thing like we did up top. We're going to put a water bucket in each one of those. Okay. 
a little bit of redstone. And what you can do, obviously, you can drop this down under the platform, make it nice and pretty. I'm not going to do that. I'll just run over here. I'll put a repeater in there since we're doing pretty good distance. Do that there. Grab a button. And now you've got a nice... Uh, one second. I'll put a torch up here to keep some stuff from spawning down in this, in this part. Hit that button. Oh, made a mistake. Hold on. First thing you want to do, put a sign on the sides here. Then put a button here, power the button. Everything goes into a nice little water channel right, right to you. Hit that, you can shut it off. Everything continue to fall and die, and let's see, let's, uh oh, see obviously this wasn't lit up quite enough, or something over here was not, that's okay, not going to worry about it, okay, so this is the basic mob farm, everything will fall, will die, you can get all the drops, you obviously will not get any of the rare drops if you do it this way. Any of the things that zombies drop, like the swords or buckets, um, none of the spider eyes. So you want to be able to also gather experience from this system and, and that's actually fairly easy to get set up as well. And I'll go I'll go and do that really quick. I'll show you how that's done as well. Um yeah, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna use those four spaces right there. I come down here and let's see, I think we leave ourselves is this right? Yeah, that's good enough to work with. Drop drop two down. You have to have a little platform down here to work off of. Pistons. You need some other kind of solid block. Um, how about how about this? Sure, that'll work. Throw down a sticky piston down here. Go ahead and. Now, where do we want to bring this up? We want to bring this up on this side. And obviously, this whole thing could have been one higher. I don't need this, this row here. Again. Repeaters. Redstone. Pretty straightforward stuff. Okay, let's see where we're gonna bring this up. Probably right oh, not there. I've knocked those signs off a dozen times now. 
Ouais, c'est bien. stuff out here and I don't know I think I think they must have all come out when the door was open make sure there's no holes here yeah there's no holes but they do like to walk right out yeah they're all one hit so they were they were down in the system and walked up and then if you can't reach some of the mobs in the system, you can drop the platform, hit the water channel, they'll push mine up here to you. You have to be careful because if you leave that on too long, some stuff will drop down here and, and be more than a one hit and kill. And like I said, if you get any spiders in here, they can come out this this spot here, so just be ready with a sword, that's a big deal. And that's uh, that's the full system. You can see it's it's already working fairly well, and I've just got one layer on the top there. And you do the same thing. If you want to add a second layer, you just put it right on top, make the channel right here, so that uh, anything that falls goes straight down into this drop area and uh, and you can bring this redstone signal from here uh, right up into the next layer and just repeat the the pattern all the way to the top okay that is the 1.3.2 mob farm system that does not require you to do any kind of any kind of preliminary cave lighting or anything for it to work it does have the one disadvantage that if uh, if I'm down here doing anything everything up in the spawner will will despawn and that can be seen as, a, as an advantage or a disadvantage obviously if you want to to have that running while you're building farms down here it's not going to work you can build farms and and other things up up at this level and that way you'll have you can do that you can go afk there and, and let a bunch of stuff spawn and then kill it and and even with uh even with just two layers here you can get up to level 30 probably probably between five and ten minutes it is not very long wait at all and it's it's not as overpowered of a system as, say, uh, uh, an Enderman farm, but you do get uh, you do get all the drops, and you have the the chance to get the rare drops from the uh, from the zombies and skeletons and stuff now too. Um, that's in uh, I think that's in one of the snapshots. I don't know if uh, 
I don't think skeletons, well skeletons drop bows, right. But there it is, and you have a uh, basically unlimited supply of, uh, of string as well, which is nice if you're going to be doing stuff with trip wires, or if you just want to make a bunch of wool without having to have a sheep farm. There it is. Um, I hope this was useful. Uh, give me a, a like or a subscribe if you if you found it found it useful at all. I'm going to be doing more stuff like this uh, in the future and uh, should build some interesting things in my Let's Play as well. So so check those out. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.